بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو دا الیکٹریکل انجینئرنگ چینل ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ڈسکس دی ٹرانزینٹ اسٹیبلٹی کنسیپٹ ان دا کورس آف پاور سسٹم آپریشن اینڈ کنٹرول ٹرانزینٹ اسٹیبلٹی از آلسو کالڈ ایز ڈائنامک اسٹیبلٹی اینڈ وائل انڈرسٹینڈنگ دس ٹرانزینٹ اسٹیبلٹی کنسیپٹ وی ہیو ٹو کنسیڈر دی پاور اینگل کرو So in the previous lecture, when we were discussing steady state stability, we derived an expression of power with respect to the angle delta. So that equation was called as power angle equation and the plot of that equation is called power angle curve. So this is a power angle curve and PE is the electrical power and we have connected a synchronous motor with the grid. and that synchronous motor is assumed as a lossless synchronous motor so its input electrical power is equal to its output mechanical power and we know that the synchronous motor always runs at synchronous speed so the synchronous speed and the rotor speed of the synchronous motor are exactly equal so there is no slip present in synchronous motors so at no loss condition pe is equal to pm and electrical power drawn from the grid by the motor is equal to the mechanical power delivered to the load now let's suppose the motor is operating at this point a and the load which is connected to the motor is equal to pm naught and the power angle is equal to delta naught suppose that suddenly the mechanical load of the motor has increased from pm naught to 2 pm 1 so whenever uh, motor's load is increased suddenly its speed will undergo slight reduction so its speed will be reduced definitely uh, suppose that if uh, a person is carrying a weight and he is moving or he is uh, walking on the road now if uh, the weight that the person is holding is increased suddenly and if he is moving with the same energy or same power the speed of walking of that person will be reduced so that is the same analogy which is applied to the motors right so whenever uh, a motor is running and if we increase its mechanical load suddenly its speed will undergo slight reduction and uh, the motor will move from point a to point b so its mechanical load is now pm1 which is slightly greater than pm0 now at this point b the motor speed will be slightly less than omega s so at point b p is equal to pm1 and omega is less than omega s at this point due to the sudden inc increment of the load or the motor has to run at the synchronous speed so after some time the motor will stabilize its speed to omega s and when the motor increases its speed from a uh, smaller value to the higher value then its power will increase further right because power is equal to t omega torque times angular speed so when the motor stabilizes its speed to omega s or it increases its speed its power will also increase so then the motor will shift from point b to point c so uh, at this point c omega is equal to omega s and its power is greater than pm1 which is the actual output power of the motor so the motor will move at point c now at this point the motor will realize that i am uh, drawing more power from the grid more electrical power from the grid and the connected load at the output shaft is smaller which is pm1 now the motor will draw less power and it will reduce its current and it will reduce its power so that it will draw the same power uh, which is equal to its connected load connected mechanical load so it will reduce its power and it will again shift from point c to point b so now it is drawing the power equal to pm1 from the grid and since the motor's power or motor's load has decreased uh, then it will definitely increase its speed so now at this point b after coming back from point c its speed will be slightly higher than omega s 
सो नाउ एट पॉइंट बी पी ई इज इक्वल टू पी एम वन बट ओमेगा इज ग्रेटर देन ओमेगा एस नाउ द मोटर विल टेंड टू स्टेबिलाईज इट स्पीड टू ओमेगा एस एंड वेन इट रिड्यूस इट स्पीड टू ओमेगा एस इट्स पावर विल डिक्रीज फर्दर सो द मोटर विल ऑपरेट एट पॉइंट ए नाउ सो एट पॉइंट ए ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा एस बट पी ई इज इक्वल टू पी एम नॉट और पी ई इज लेस देन पी एम वन सो वी कैन सी दैट देर आर सेवरल ऑसिलेशन प्रेजेंट इन द मोटर एंड द मोटर इज कंटिन्यूसली शिफ्टिंग इट्स ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए टू पॉइंट सी एंड देन फ्रॉम पॉइंट सी टू पॉइंट ए सो बिटवीन दीज टू पॉइंट द मोटर विल ऑसिलेट बट आफ्टर सम टाइम ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ डेम्पर माइंडिंग इन द सिंक्रोनस मोटर एंड ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ विंडेज एंड फ्रिक्शनल लॉसिस द मोटर विल स्टेबिलाईज एट पॉइंट बी आफ्टर सम टाइम सो आफ्टर सम ऑसिलेशन एंड ड्यू टू डेम्पर माइंडिंग एंड फ्रिक्शनल और विंडेज लॉसिस सिस्टम सेटल्स टू पॉइंट बी सो एट द स्टडी स्टेट और एट पॉइंट बी पी ई इज इक्वल टू पी एम वन एंड ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा एस सो हेयर वी कैन ऑब्जर्व टू ट्राई एंगल्स सो दिस इज फर्स्ट ट्राई एंगल ए बी डी एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड ट्राई एंगल विच इज बी सी ई दिस ट्राई एंगल कोरिस्पॉन्ड्स टू द एरिया ए वन दिस ट्राई एंगल कोरिस्पॉन्ड्स टू द एरिया ए टू एंड दिस एरिया कोरिस्पॉन्ड्स टू डिसलरेशन एंड दिस एरिया ए टू कोरिस्पॉन्ड्स टू द एक्सेलरेशन ओके Uh, so motor will reach stable point B if and only if areas A1 and A2 are equal. If these two areas A1 and A2 are equal, then eventually the motor will settle at point B, which is the stable point. So this condition is called as equal area criteria, and this is the criteria which ensures the stability of the power system. If this criteria is not satisfied, then the motor will never Uh, be stable at point B and it will continue its oscillation. So the system will be oscillatory if the areas A1 and A2 are not equal. And if these two areas are equal, the system will become stable after some time. So now we will discuss equal area criteria in terms of the swing equation. And from the previous lecture, we have understood uh, the mathematical form of the swing equation which is written over here and uh, d square delta over dt square is equal to pa over m so we can multiply both sides uh, of this equation by two times d delta over dt so two times d delta over dt multiplied by d square delta over dt square is equal to two times d delta over dt multiplied by pa over m so the integral of uh, the left hand side is equal to d delta over dt whole square since uh, we have the derivative of uh, this term d delta over dt so the derivative of this term is d square delta over d, d square so we have the derivative of this term as well at the left hand side so the integral of this term will be equal to d delta over dt whole square divided by 2 so that 2 will be cancelled out with this 2 so the integral of this whole expression will be equal to d delta over dt whole square and the integral of uh, this term uh, can also be evaluated so we will have 2 pa over m d delta over dt multiplied by dt so these two dt will be cancelled out with each other and we will have 2 over m pa multiplied by d delta so d delta over dt will be equal to the square root of 2 divided by m into p a d delta integral and for stability d delta over dt should be equal to 0 so if the system has become stable it means there are no more oscillations of the system uh, around any point so for example if we are stable at this point b then there will be no more oscillations and delta will become constant and p also will become constant so when delta becomes constant, d delta over dt will be equal to 0. So this is the condition for stability. And d delta over dt is equal to 0 means this term is equal to 0. And this term is equal to 0 means pa d delta equal to 0. And uh, 
पी ए इज इक्वल टू पी एम माइनस पी ई डी डेल्टा इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी कैन इंटीग्रेट दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड इक्वल एरिया क्राइटेरिया कैन बी डिफाइंड एज वेन एवर ए डिस्टर्बेंस अकर्स दी एक्सलरेटिंग एंड डिसलरेटिंग एनर्जी इज इन्वॉल्व इन स्विंगिंग ऑफ द रोटर ऑफ इन क्रोनस मशीन मस्ट बी इक्वल सो दैट अ स्टेबल ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट बी कुड बी लोकेटेड सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इक्वल एरिया क्राइटेरिया नाउ वी कैन अवेलुएट दिस इंटेग्रल Uh, based on the equal area criteria so when areas a1 and a2 are equal uh, their difference uh, will be equal to 0 so a1 minus a2 is equal to 0 this is equal area criteria in the mathematical form so this is the first area uh, which is a1 and a1 is actually the area of this triangle and uh, we can evaluate the area of this triangle by evaluating the area under the curve right so area of this triangle is equal to this power minus this power and integral from delta naught to delta 1 now this point is uh, equal to pm1 right this point is equal to pm1 minus this power so this power corresponds to pe so pm1 minus pe can be integrated from delta naught to delta 1 to get a1 similarly area a2 can be evaluated by integrating pe minus pm1 from delta 1 to delta 2 so this thing is also shown over here pm1 minus pe from delta naught to delta 1 minus pe minus pm1 from delta 1 to delta 2 so we can integrate these two expressions and equate them to zero and we know that pe is equal to p max sin delta this is called power angle equation and let's substitute this value in this simple integration and evaluate this integration within these limits and at the end we will get this expression and after doing the simplification and cancelling some uh, like terms uh, we will get the final expression as pm1 into delta 2 minus delta not equal to p max cos delta not minus cos delta 2 so cos delta not minus cos delta 2 can be written as pm1 divided by p max multiplied by delta 2 minus delta not and pm1 is equal to p max sin delta 1 okay so it will become cos delta not minus cos delta 2 equal to sin delta 1 into delta 2 minus delta 1 so this is the condition for stability uh, of a power system based on equal area criteria so it means if we are given this power angle curve and we are given these three angles delta nor delta 1 and delta 2 we can check the stability of the power system so we can input these values of three angles delta nor delta 1 and delta 2 in this expression uh, so if this condition is satisfied after substituting these three angles if the left hand side of this equation is equal to the right hand side then we can say that the system is stable otherwise the system is unstable and in that case areas a1 and a2 will not be equal as well now i will discuss the transient stability limit and uh, transient stability limit uh, can be explained as follows so here you can see that uh, this is an unstable system right so this is our area a1 which corresponds to the deceleration and this is our area a2 which corresponds to the acceleration and uh, this area is greater than a2 so area a1 is greater than a2 and this is the example of an unstable system and uh, this uh, uh, figure can be observed uh, as well uh, here we have uh, this area a1 and this is the area a2 so in this case these two areas are just equal and uh, this uh, the is the example of a stable system but uh, this is the limiting case of a stable system if uh, this point b uh, is uh, increased further or extended further slightly towards the right hand side of the curve this area a1 will be greater and then area a2 will never be equal to area a1 because we don't have any stability margin over here so that will be the case of an unstable system 
so this is the stable system and it is the limiting case of a stable system any further increase in this area a1 will never result in area a2 equal to area a1 so that is called transient stability limit so if we consider this case and here you can see this is our area a1 this is our area a2 but we have a lot of margin over here at the right hand side of this area a2 so any increase in delta 1 or any extension of this point b towards the left uh, towards the right hand side uh, will cause area a2 also to extend towards the right hand side and we have so much area present over here at the right hand side of area a2 so that system is stable and we have a lot of stability margin over here and this is not the limiting case of a stable system here we have a lot of margin and we can further extend this angle delta 1 towards the right hand side of this curve and the system will become stable as well okay so the stability can be achieved even if we move this angle delta 1 further towards the right hand side but in this case you can see that if we extend b any further towards the right hand side this area a2 will be reduced eventually because there is no stability margin over here and all the margin has been occupied by this area a2 so this is the limiting case of the stability and this condition is called as transient stability limit if we slightly further extend this point b towards the right hand side then we will get such a scenario and in such a scenario you can see that area a2 will be eventually uh, smaller than a1 and in that case the system will become unstable so let's read this text now in this case we fail to locate area a2 that is equal to area a1 so the machine loses its stability since the speed cannot restore to ns in this case between these two cases of stable and unstable scenarios there must be a limiting case where a, where a2 is just equal to a1 any further increase in pm1 will cause a2 to be less than a1 so this is called transient stability limit in figure 2 is the maximum load change that the machine can sustain synchronism and it's thus uh, and is thus the transient stability limit so that is all about our transient stability discussion uh, in the context of swing equation and its mathematical realization as well and i hope you have understood the concepts uh, which are um, very important and discussed in detail in this lecture uh, for watching more lectures please subscribe this channel until the next lecture it's goodbye